Hi, this is Tony Turner, and welcome to the market now as of Friday, August 22nd at about 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The market now is your mini trading lesson that applies to today's markets. The major averages are mixed now with the S&P 500 hovering right at its flat level. However, the Fed chair did not share any insights that could be considered as new. Ms. Yellen said the FOMC sees significant underutilization of labor resources and that the labor market has not yet fully recovered. Of course, she said that all before. She also indicated that faster progress on goals could lead to a quicker rate hike. The comments from the Fed chair had little impact on equities and the key indices remain near their flat lines with the Dow down a little more, with investors showing reluctance to step in ahead of a weekend that could potentially include some geopolitical developments. On that note, European markets and U.S. index futures tumbled in the early morning after a Russian aid convoy crossed Ukraine's border without permission from the government. However, Ukraine said it will allow the convoy to, to proceed in order to avoid provocations. Now let's look at three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. Yesterday on our, chart, uh, our daily chart of the S&P 500 spider, the SPY, of course this is the ETF that closely follows our S&P 500 uh, index. Yesterday we saw a new all-time high yet again uh, <clears throat> at $199.76 and a closing high of $199.50. Again, very close to the 200 mark, which is right just within just within kissing distance of the 200 mark. And of course, that would be the 2,000 mark for the S&P 500 benchmark itself. We've been looking for that for a long, long time, that, that large round number. Now, uh, we had all-time highs back here in July, and then the S&P 500 index, and of course the spider which follows it, fell down to a low just above 190 or above 1900 on the S&P, just about a 4.5% retracement here. We haven't seen anything akin to a 10% uh, correction since uh, the year 2011. However, this, this recent uh, pullback here you see on pretty strong volume turned around, pivoted, and rallied very, very quickly with the SPY moving very quickly back up through its 20-day moving average, the red line, the 50-day moving average, the green line, and bouncing right back up literally to where it started, and then some. So that's all very positive. We can see the 14-day RSI was certainly oversold in the first week of August, but since then it has bounced dramatically going from oversold uh, back near the 30 line about three weeks ago, a little less than that, and now up in almost uh, overbought territory, which would be marked if it went over 70 on the 14-day RSI. So that's what we're looking at right now, albeit this last move up was, was very nice and very orderly. As you may be able to tell by our chart here, it did so on very low volume, which is typical for this month and this part of the year. So we see that the move down uh, happened on a lot stronger volume than the recent rally. But hey, you take, uh, you take bull gains where you can get them. Now we'll see if the S&P 500 or the SPY can hold these highs or if more geopolitical events next week will, turn it to cause, will, will cause it to turn, excuse me, more choppy uh, into next week, which is, of course, the last week of August. Our next chart is the PowerShares QQQ. This is a daily chart 
of the ETF that closely follows or that follows our NASDAQ 100 index, the top non-financial stocks in that stock market. Now, uh, the PowerShares QQQ actually made uh, a new relative new high today at about 99.16 or 17. Now it's back down to 99.06, uh, still definitely a leader in the market. Uh, the, the tech index has been the pa market powerhouse this summer. Uh, July 24th, it moved down, as, as, the, as I just showed you on the S&P. But the Qs only moved down to their 50-day moving average, the rising green line here. They did not move lower than that, as did the S&P and the Dow. Moved down here to about 94, again, the rising 50-day moving average, caught that support level, and then the Qs rallied back up again very, very quickly and even went past their relative new high from before, again, to move up today into the 99 zone. While the RSI did not become terrifically oversold, it is now venturing into overbought, uh, as it is right back up to 70, which uh, shows us the overbought zone on the 14-day RSI. The MACD, like on the SPY, uh, while well, in this case did not go below the zero line, uh, it bounced off the 50-day and bounced, the MACD bounced off the zero line. So it is moving higher. Again, we are getting a little overbought here. And again, we're doing so on very low volume. So we'll have to see. Uh, the Qs are now trading quite high above, relatively high above their 20-day moving average, their 50-day moving average, certainly the 200-day moving average, almost 10% over that. Now we'll have to see if Apple, the biggest component of this particular index, if it can, can higher, continue higher next week. It's at about 101 right now. Uh, we'll have to see if, if indeed this is getting, uh, this is getting a, again, overbought here. We'll have to see if the Qs can continue higher. If we look at a long-term chart, the next area of resistance for the Qs is at 102. That's actually from the highs of August uh, 2000, so it's, it's 14 years ago that the Qs were at this level. We'll have to see if 102 still has any power left in it from 14 years ago, if the Qs can manage to go higher and above this channel line that I've drawn for you here. Uh, if they cannot, then perhaps they'll have to roll over and, and chop into the end of the month. Again, we'll see how that happens in this coming week. Our third chart today is the S&P uh, Spider Regional Banking ETF. Uh, I didn't put up the symbol. The symbol is the KRE. Major components in the KRE are Citgroup, Huntington Bank Shares, United Bank Shares, Cullen Frost Bankers. Of course, we have um, Key Corp, uh, Regional Banks, uh, Bank United. Now, we know that these regional banks tend to flourish in the good housing markets. We know that they also tend to flourish if, if yields uh, move a little higher. They simply make more money by selling money at higher prices. That would be the yield. Now, the yield on the 10-year or, or interest rates. The yield on the 10-year bond right now is still hovering at about 2.40%. However, uh, the KRE here is bouncing off. It's making a higher low here, as we can see. Uh, at this moment, it made a recent low here uh, at, uh, or a pivot low, I should say. It is a higher low from the May low. Pivot low at $37.42 on August the 6th. If we want to look back to recent highs, we can see a high at March 21st of $42.79. We can also see from that March high that the KRE made a very brief but potent double top formation. Then it continued to move lower, made a measured move down that would measure very closely. If we measured from the support line up to the highs here, 
we can see that the KRE continued, uh, did move down, made a measured move lower, rallied in a throwback rally, could not, though, go through the 50-day moving average and continued lower, back down to support from uh, the first part of February. As I said now, though, again, it's made a higher low. That's a good thing. We can see it's forming a very large triangle here. If interest rates do start up, it's possible that the KRE can move through this moving average, the 50-day that's coming down overhead. Possible it can move a little more easily through the 200-day, the black line, because the black line is rising, not falling. Uh, a rising moving average with price beneath it, beneath it does not tend to be as potent of a resistance as does a falling moving average. So it's got some work to do here. If interest rates in the next few weeks do start to, or yields uh, on, same thing on 10-year bonds, do start to rise, it's potentially we could look for the KRE to start higher here. So I'm going to keep an eye on that, see if it can move up and over 39.50, and then perhaps advance up toward 40, $40.50, and then see how it handles this overhead trend line, which is coming in. Okay, now we'll go on to next week's economic report. Monday, we have new home sales. Tuesday, we have durable orders in the Case Schiller 20 City Index and consumer confidence. On Wednesday, we have our usual crude inventories. Thursday, we have the GDP second quarter estimate. 